video, I'm going to show you how to make a, a passive solar garage door. Um, so our house and our garage are oriented south. And so I had traditional garage doors on here. In fact, I had kind of traditional wood garage doors. And so what I've done is I've built these into passive solar by just filling them up with plexiglass. Uh, right now it's, it's May, so it's summertime. We're not getting a lot of sun in the garage. But in the winter time, when the sun goes lower, we get a lot of sun in the garage. It warms up our garage. And in fact, uh, I live in Michigan, southern Michigan, and we haven't had the garage freeze. We pull the cars in because the, the sun shines on the garage floor. It keeps the floor and the garage warm. So we don't actually have a garage freeze in the winter time, which is nice. You pull the cars in, it's kind of like having a heated garage. Taking a look at the inside here, you can see I've just used all the original hardware that was already on the garage door. I just bolted it back onto this one when I got done making the panels. Uh, I copied the panels exactly the size that they were and as it turned out the top panel of the garage and the lower panel of the garage were a little bit smaller than the middle two so I don't know why it was made that way I assume there was a reason so all I was copy the dimensions of the original garage panels and you can see I've just made this out of two by four here and hopefully you can see this plexiglass and all I did was notch out the edges of the two by four and then that piece that I notched out I just put it right back on there to hold the plexiglass in then on the outside here, where the plexiglass meets, I, I went ahead and caulked this. I haven't cleaned this off. It's about two years old now. And I figured I'd wait two years to make sure it was going to work before I built the other one. And it's working great. Uh, no problems at all. You can see my other garage door here. <laughs> Just a regular old wooden garage door that obviously is in need of a, a facelift. In this case, I'm just going to build one that's just like this passive solar one over here. So I have to cut a bunch of these vertical boards, some at 13 inches, some at 15 inches. Um, it's important that I get them all the same size, so this is a little trick that I learned. What I've done is I've taken, I got my chop saw table here, and I've taken a clamp on this side and clamped it at 13 inches. So I put the saw blade down, locked it in place, and measured over to the clamp 13 inches. And now what I'll do is I'll just keep running this, running this wood through and cutting it. I'll cut this one, then I'll slide it over till it hits the clamp, cut the next one. Since I've got to cut a bunch of them and I need them to all be the same size, so that my panels are, are square. Uh, I just set it up like that. That's a little trick that I learned. I'm sure lots of woodworkers already know that, but if you don't know that, that'll save you a lot of time and make your work a lot more accurate. So I'm gonna cut a whole bunch at 13. I'm gonna cut a whole bunch at 15 because that matches the dimensions of the panels that I'm replacing. Okay, so now I've got all my, all my wood cut. I've got the vertical slats, which are the ones going up and down. I've got the horizontal pieces, big long horizontal pieces, the ones going all across. I got those all cut to measurement now. And now what I gotta do is I gotta take them over on the table saw and notch these boards out so that the plexiglass will fit in the notches. And so I've got my table saw set up here. So I've got my table saw set up here, and the size of these notches that I'm gonna cut out are a half inch. So I've got the blade height of my table saw at a half inch. And I've also got the width at the exact same thing, a half inch. A uh, couple words of caution about the table saw. If you've never used a table saw or you don't know about table saw safety, do not try to use a table saw. Uh, very dangerous. It's a really handy tool, but it's super dangerous. And basically what happens here is plexiglass is going to sit down in there. They're all going to be cut out around the window. And this is going to be the little piece that holds the plexiglass on there. I'm going to put that same piece right back in there. So what I've done, you notice over here, is I've organized my piles by my 13s, my 15s, and my long ones because I want to keep those pieces organized so that when I go to put the plex, after I put the plexiglass in, I got my pieces in the right spot. So when you're cutting the longer pieces, I would suggest using a feather board. And you see I've just got made one here out of some wood. And all that does is that holds that. And all that's going to do, those feather boards are just going to hold it tight to the, um, to the guide here. Okay. Okay, so that's all the time I have today. I've got all the wood cut now to length. Uh, I've got it all notched out for the glass. Um, you can see that I've taped the shims together here to keep them organized so that when I go back after I put the glass in, I don't have to go searching around the shims and find which one are the 13 and which are the 15. Also, I taped the longer shims even though I don't worry about keeping them organized. When you get wood that small, it tends to bow and warp really bad, so I taped it all together to keep it from doing that. Um, some of it had knots in it and these things broke along the way the longer pieces did and that's no big deal i just put them back together taped them all up when after i put the glass in it'll be no problem to just kind of piece that back together it's not going to be a big deal that that broke so if yours breaks when you're over a knot 
no worries. Okay, so I laid out the boards, the horizontal boards here, and I marked them all at once. Um, it's important to get everything all lined up, so marking it all at once where those, those, those vertical boards are gonna go makes a lot of sense. I tried to use the uh, pocket jig and that didn't work. Um, what happens with the pocket jig is the screws would come right down into the into the channel where the glass is going to go so forget that so all i did was just like i did the first time around which is just drill some holes for the screw to go in the the longest deck screw that i could get was three and three quarters inch and if i was to run that through the two by four it wouldn't hold very much so i just sunk these things down a little bit um got a bit big fat bit taped it off and then I set them all up on end and I drilled them all at once. It was a lot faster. I marked where the two by fours were gonna go and then just drilled them all out. And now I've got one all laid out here I'm gonna put together. So I've got all the pieces laid out there for one of the one of the panels. And so I'm gonna glue it and then screw it together. Okay, so I got it all set up now. Uh, I don't have a table nine feet long, so I just laid it out on the garage floor here. I've glued each of the boards everywhere that these pieces are gonna be glued in there. And now I'm just gonna clamp them. everything all lined up. Okay, now that I got it all glued and, and uh, clamped together, I'm just going to drill a pilot hole through here and put one of these big deck screws in each of these spots. Just one in each is plenty for strength. The glue is really what's holding everything together here. Okay, glue it and screw it together. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other four panels. Okay, so I've uh, got all my panels now assembled and I spent a good bit of time sanding them, getting ready to paint them now. So what I did when I was sanding them is I used a 60 grit, a real rough grain paper and, a, and an orbital sander. And I probably spent a half an hour on each of the panels. So it probably took me about two hours to sand them down. And in that half an hour, I probably spent 20 to 25 minutes on all of the surfaces that were going to be exposed to the exterior. Uh, sanding everything down real smooth is going to make sure that when I prime it and paint it I get a real good seal on the wood and hopefully I won't have to paint it then for a long time. Um, I got a wood primer, a special oil based wood primer and then on top of the oil based wood primer I'm going to put a regular uh, um, acrylic latex paint on the outside. Uh, probably going to do two coats of the primer and then just a single coat of the uh, exterior acrylic. Okay, so I've got my panels all painted now. Um, as it turns out, I only needed one coat of primer and one coat of paint. Uh, the sanding, I did such a good job on the sanding that it was pretty smooth and the first coat of primer sealed it all up, covered it up. Uh, this is the garage door that I'm going to be replacing. And I looked inside the garage and the building permit was for 1952. So this wooden garage door is 60 years old. Obviously you can see the paint is coming off, but other than that, the door is still pretty functional. So with the south facing door, you really don't get a lot of uh, sun. It's morning time right now, so we're getting a little bit of sun, but it's, you know, by the time the sun gets up here, it's not, it's gonna be in the shade. So it doesn't get a lot of sun damage for the south facing door. So I'm hoping maybe my door won't last 60 years, but maybe, you know, 20 or 30 before I have to do anything major to it. Uh, I'm going to use the hardware off of this door. I'm just going to take all the hardware off of this door and put it on my new door. Uh, in 1952 when they made this garage door, they made the hardware better than I could ever find or buy today. So I'm just going to take it off and reuse it. Okay, I'm getting ready to uh, cut the plexiglass now. Uh, so I've got a vinyl siding blade in my, in my table saw. Real fine tooth vinyl siding blade, really cheap. Um, and so I've set my guard. That was a nice thing about cutting all of those those width pieces Consistently because now I can just go through and my plexiglass is going to be the same width 
so I just set my set my guide there, my, my table saw guide, and I'm gonna run it all through. Okay, I have all the plexiglass cut and popped in there. Um, I'll have to take the protective layering off now. I'll take the protective layering off and I'll start putting the trim around. The windows are facing down right now, so I just got the windows resting in there. I'll put the trim on the back side there all around the outside of the window and then flip it over and caulk them. Okay, so I'll just show you again just in case it wasn't clear. So the wood that I cut out that I notched out to put the glass in, I saved that wood. And that wood is the actual trim that I put back around the glass. Um, by cutting it on the table saw, notching it out on the table saw after I've already cut it with the chop saw to length, I've got all my trim pieces already cut. And so I just simply go to my bundle of trim pieces, lay them out, they're all cut, they fit perfectly. And then let's see, all I did was uh, drill a pilot hole there and then put some screws to hold it down. That's it. Now my window, my glass is in there. Um, I need to seal it, so what's left to do now is I'm going to take this pane that I've just put together, I'm going to flip it over and run a bead of caulk all around the edges of the, the plexiglass and the wood on the front side. Uh, I'm not going to paint this trim. This trim is on the back side of the garage. It's not going to get sun. It's not going to get weather or anything, so it's just going to stay just like that unfinished wood. Okay, so I've got the panels all together. They're dried. I've mounted uh, some of the hardware and then you can see I've mounted the handles there. And so now I'm just basically going to put this garage door together and the way you do that is you build it from the bottom up. So I first placed the bottom panel in, put all the hardware on that, and now I've set the next panel in. You can see here that I've got a couple shims. All I did was take a piece of cardboard and fold that up. You just want to have a little space between the panels so they're not rubbing on one another. So I put a couple shims on each side there. See that second shim there. Um, clamp is really handy. That clamp is holding that door, that, that top panel from just flipping over. Let's go ahead and now take a look on the inside. Okay, so when we're putting the garage door together, this is another time to use extreme caution. The springs that hold the garage door are very dangerous. So what you want to do is you want to lift the garage door all the way up, the old garage door, all the way up and disconnect the springs before you take it out. So you pull the garage door all the way up, disconnect the springs, and then you can let it back down. Now, garage doors are really heavy, so make sure you're really careful when you bring that thing down and you're ready for it. Um, because it might surprise you, especially if your garage door was wood before, like mine. It's extremely heavy, and those springs, of course, are under a lot of tension. Very dangerous. So I've disconnected the springs entirely. I'm going to build this garage door. Once I get all the panels together, I will lift it up, and then I'll brace it. And once I brace it, then I'll go to connect the strings, the springs back, the springs back on there. Okay, so I'm going to put the rest of the panels together, and we'll check back in there. Okay, so here we are. It's uh, New Year's Day, January 1st, and uh, it's pretty cold outside, but it's sunny, and now the sunshine is shining in our garage there and warming everything up. Uh, it's about 11.30 now, so the sun has just started to really get shining in here in the winter. It's about the time the sun really starts to shine into the, to the door windows here. Let's go ahead and take a look in the garage now. So you can see the sunshine shining in on our concrete floors, warming everything up. You see that the car is all cleaned off. We've got to go get the salt off, but no snow or anything. It's, it's warm in the garage. When I put the car in here, it was covered in snow. But you notice the last couple days we had some sun. It's all dried out, nice and dry in our garage now. Uh, there's my boat, which I do fish in the wintertime, but that's all. I was all covered in snow yesterday, too, and now it's all cleaned off and dry so the garage doors are working great